Okay, so let's take a look at question number five, where uh, we're asked to find um, three consecutive odd integers, um, given that the condition here is that the sum of the squares would be equal to 515. So the first thing we need to know is what are consecutive integers or consecutive odd integers. Um, so we need to recognize that that is any sequence of odd values. Um, so one, three, five would be consecutive odd integers. Um, we could also have something like seven, nine, 11. Okay, as long as the, uh, the integers that are given um, follow in a, in a consecutive or one after another pattern. So the, they differ by two um, in, in each case. So how could we set this up as an algebraic equation? Well, the first thing we could do is we can say, let the first value um, be x. Okay, so if, if we declare that x is going to be an odd integer, okay, which is just something that we can say because the, the conditions of this question um, are going to allow us such that it should it, it should work out that when we solve for x we'll find an odd integer. We just declare that x is going to be an odd value. So then our second value would be um, simply two units um, greater than than x. So that would be our second one. And then our third value, okay, would just simply be x plus four. All right, so to do this question, all we really need to do now is just do the sum of the squares. So we're going to generate an expression that just has x squared plus x plus two squared plus x plus four squared, and we're going to make that all equal to 515. So what you're gonna do here is um, expand and simplify. Um, so this is a type of a question that you should be able to complete. Um, easily. You can uh, use graphing, you can try factoring, or you can try the quadratic equation. Okay, now just remember when we are going to find the roots of this equation, um, we are probably going to have a positive root and a negative root. So what you'll want to do is substitute whatever values you get for positive and negative and put them back into your let statements to define what the actual numbers are. Okay, with questions like this, you should see that you get one set of values for the positive term, and then you get another set of values for the negative term. Um, the numbers will should be actually the same. It's just that one set is positive, one set is negative. Um, and when you work it out, um, you'll see that you should, those numbers will make sense. Okay, now just as an aside, there's another way you could look at this question. Um, this is the most straightforward way to to do your let statement is to just have x, x plus two and x plus four. Okay, but there's no reason you couldn't play around with this a little bit. And you could say, well, what if my, um, what if my third value was x? Okay, and instead of adding numbers, I could say, well, I could just subtract. Okay, so I could have x and then x minus two is my next value and then x minus four. So you see how this is kind of a parallel set of expressions. Um, you could do the sum of the squares of those and work out your roots and you should find that you actually would get the same answer. Um, your positive and negative values may, will probably just get reversed, but you'll get a slightly different equation. Um, so you would go x squared plus x minus two squared plus x minus four squared equals to 515, but you would in fact get the same value. And there's actually one more combination you could, you could play with if you wanted to try this and just kind of prove it to yourself. You could just say, well, what if my middle value is just x? Then one of the consecutive values above that x could be x plus two, and then a consecutive value below x could be just x minus two. So instead of having um, plus four minus four, we, we set the one of the middle terms to be x. And again, if you do some of the squares of this expression equal to 515, you will generate a root. And you should again find that the numbers are indeed the same. 
Okay, so that's just a little bit um, a way, different ways to look at this question. Um, the easiest one is just to pick the first as being x and then go x plus 2, x plus 4. It's the one that most people understand intuitively. But there are different ways that you could put this together. Um, and the math will actually lead you um, to the same answers. So it's kind of an interesting uh, exercise if you wanted to try that. Okay, so that question is uh, how we would work that out.